Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes. Welcome back to this series about getting started with Doric OSE, Steinberg's free music notation software. In the last video, we got the software up and running. So now we're all set, we can dive straight in and have a look around. When you run Dorico, the first thing you see is the hub. From here, you can learn about the software, create a new project, or open an existing one. I'll double-click this project, which I'll use to show you around the user interface. The design of the Dorico window keeps everything clean and uncluttered, with lots of space to show the music. At each side of the window, there are collapsible zones that give you access to the various controls and music notations you'll be using in your projects. At the top of the window is the toolbar, which stays the same wherever you're working in Dorico. At the right end of the toolbar is the Show Help button. When pressed, areas of the user interface become links to the relevant page of the operation manual. Simply click an area you would like to learn about. You'll also notice there are several help buttons in many of Dorico's dialogues, next to specific controls and options, that work in the same way. Next are undo and redo buttons, some basic transport controls, and here you can open the video window for scoring to picture, and the mixer. Over on the left side, we have controls for selecting what to display in the music area. For example, I can choose to look at the voice only part. And with the tab bar showing, I can open a new tab and display a different layout. And here are the mode buttons. Dorico uses modes to adapt the user interface to fit your current work. These roughly follow the different stages of working through a project, setting it up, writing your music, playing it back, and printing it out. At the moment, we're in write mode, which is probably where you'll spend most of your time in Dorico. It's where you'll input, edit, and arrange your music. The left zone is home to the notes panel, where you'll find note durations, common accidentals, slurs, and articulations. The notes toolbox is home to many of Dorico's powerful input tools, some of which we'll be exploring over the course of this video series. Over on the right, you'll find the notations panels, with all the notation items you need to construct your score, organized into musical categories. For example, clefs, key signatures, time signatures, and so on. You can also create music items with popovers that allow you to type the specific notation that you need. Each notation type has its own popover, and they can also be invoked with key commands of shift plus the first letter of the category. For example, Shift D for dynamics. See how quickly I can add this chain of dynamics to the music. The lower zone contains several different panels. First up is a panel for setting special properties on selected items that change the way they look, behave, or are positioned in the music. It's context sensitive, which means that when you select an item in the music, only the properties relating to that item are shown, making it easier to find the control you need. To set a property, click the little switch to turn it on and choose a setting. There are panels for making it easier to input music for keyboard, fretted instruments, and percussion kits. You can choose to work with the mixer in line in the window here. And finally, there's the key editor that presents a different way of working and interacting with your music that will be familiar to those of you who have previously used software sequences and DAWs. The music for each instrument is presented in a MIDI piano roll view that places notes graphically on a grid, where each row denotes a different chromatic pitch and horizontally shows where the notes start and stop. Dorico has some really clever tools for controlling the playback of your music without affecting the notation, allowing you to shape a more natural and human-like performance. 
and being able to work with the key editor in write mode alongside the notation is extremely powerful and flexible. If we switch to setup mode, you'll notice these panels all change to display different controls. Here is where you choose which players and instruments you have in your music. You can set up the overall structure of your project, so if you're writing a piece that has more than one movement or song, then you can create those additional flows, as we call them, here. Dorico brings these all together into layouts that are the actual sheet music that you work with and that you'll print for your musicians to perform from. Play mode has a tracks view that shows a track for each instrument in the flow with a graphical representation of the instrument's music. As you select each track, the inspector on the left updates to show information about the sound used to play back the music in that track, any loaded effects, and a mini mixer control for the channel. Dorico SE ships with the VST instrument Halion Sonic, which has a library of different sounds that Dorico loads automatically and uses for the instruments in your project. You can change those sounds for any others available, including other third-party VST sound libraries that you may own. The final mode provides all the control you need to print your music exactly as you need it, on single sheets or in booklet form, telling your printer to print on both sides of the paper, and so on. And you can also export your music to graphics files in a variety of different formats, including PDF, making it very easy and quick to share your music. Now you're familiar with the basic setup of Dorico, let's start making some music. In the next video, we're going to create our first project. See how easy it is to input music, either note by note using your computer or recording it live using a MIDI keyboard. Please like and share this video if you found it useful. Thank you so much. And leave a comment below if you have any questions. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.